Now, everyone knows the Elan is a fantastic handling little car. It's got some pretty high profile fans in that respect. Jim Clark owned one. Um, Gordon Murray's a big fan. Jay Leno likes them and they're, they're pretty round worldwide for just how good they handle and how much fun they are to drive. And seeing as we've got the car, uh, the suspension and chassis fully derobed, shall we say, thought it might be good to have a look around and see the suspension components uh, in all their glory prior to being restored. So actually most of them are quite rusty and grubby, but it's a good chance to, to have an overview of the system. Starting up at the front end of the car, steering rack with no power assistance, not a common thing you would come across nowadays. And if we look at the passenger side front suspension, double wishbone system, you have the steering arm coming in out onto the front and this bolts on to this separate steering arm here that attaches to, I guess what we would nowadays call the hub. Just how dainty the hub is, is truly incredible when you consider, you know, the, the size that you're used to with modern day components. If putting a finger in against it really gives you an idea just how dainty the metal work is on that. And that bolts on to the upper and lower wishbones. Now these are up rated wishbones. I think they're from Spider. So on these you can see that's that's tubular steel. Whereas the standard items were um, steel plate bent into a profile. And the same on the bottom, these are operated ones to either tubular or cast. I'm not actually sure which. I'll need to take them apart and get a good look. The damper in the middle is rather conspicuously newer than the rest of the suspension. That's a height adjustable and damping adjustable unit, I think from AVO coilovers that my father had put on the car um, at some point in the late 90s. And in the back here, I think just down here, there's a grease port for the hub mechanism. Your wheel bearing is housed within this assembly here and the disc is molded to the back of the drive face. And with the car running knockoff spinner style wheels, you have the drive pins there that lock into the back of the wheel. That stops the wheel from rotating on the face of the hub and enables your braking force to get you know, translated through the wheel into the tire and then into the road. The car did have a front anti-roll bar. So the front anti-roll bar, a little spindly effort here, connecting on to the bottom of the lower arm there. And if you follow the manual, that's actually your jacking point for the car. If you need to jack a corner up on the suspension, um, then that's where you're meant to do it, according to the manual. At the back of the car, no rear anti-roll bar. And it's actually quite a simple, um, quite a simple system that we have in place with just the lower wishbone and the damper. Not your typical um, McPherson strut style setup for, for this. It's, I don't know how unique it was to the design um, of the car at the time, but you have your um, hub here with the bearings for the rear axle contained within the hub there. Drive flange again for going into the back of the wheel and it's got drive pegs on it to, to tie into the back of the wheel. In this case, it's got washers placed over the drive pegs to try and sort out the wonky wheel offset. But the less said about that, the better. It's just gonna get me annoyed again. So anyway, within your hub, you've got the bearings um, for the drive of the car. Then you have this upright here, which is an alloy housing, a steel tube pressed into the alloy housing and that gives you your spring platform and then the damper is inside the uh, the steel insert here. So if I just try and move this up, you should just about be able to see the top there. So that nut is actually what screws the insert, the damper into that housing. Then up at the top, you have what's known as a, a loto cone. So metal housing with a rubber insert and the top mount allows a degree of axial movement in the arm 
So as the suspension compresses, as the lower wishbone here compresses, naturally the wheel is going to move up and the damper angle is going to want to change. And that Loto cone just gives you a little bit of adjustment that you need. I may be missing the obvious um, on this. I need to do better research, but I don't see an immediately obvious way to adjust the toe on the rear. Um, these don't appear to be eccentric bushes on the, the chassis side for the wishbone, and I can't see any eccentricity in the hub end either. So need to discover how you actually adjust the toe on the rear suspension. Um, I know that there are companies, I know Spider, for example, make adjustable wishbones on the back where they have a sort of rose jointed section in the middle of one of the arms so that you can adjust the length of the arm and that would change the toe angle via the hub. Well, we don't appear to have that on, on this car. So that's the mission for the rest of the day. I'm gonna strip the suspension down, get it all off the chassis so that we can get the chassis one step closer to going away to get blasted and uh, re-powder coated or repainted and also clean up all the front hubs, renew the ball joints, renew any bearings as required, get everything tidied up around there and looking pretty. Sorry, one final thing before I kick into actually removing the suspension. Before all the Facebook and YouTube and you know, World Wide Web experts start lecturing me through their nose on the correct nomenclature for the parts that I'm describing, I'm actually perfectly aware that according to Lotus terminology, that is the trunnion. And moving to the back, this part here in Lotus terminology is the housing. But in my world and in the modern world, we would know these as the hubs. So that's the terminology that I tend to use just through force of habit. So if you don't like it, I don't care.